Welcome back to semi-finals day here at the Yonix Japan Open 2008 and after that extraordinary men's singles semi-final with the Olympic silver medalist Lee Chong Wei absolutely smashing the day in the number six seed Jochen Pearson 21-6, 21-4 next on court we have women's doubles and I'm sure it will be much more fiercely contested semi-final this women's doubles. The number one seeds, the Olympic semi-finalists, Mayuki Maeda and Satoko Suetsuna of Japan up against the new Chinese pairing of Cheng Shu and Zhao Yunlei. Japanese pair had a titanic battle late yesterday, last match on court, the semi-final, and I noticed a little stretch of the back there, I hope they physically recovered from that match against the Indonesians. So the players introduced to the crowd, and as far as the Chinese combination are concerned, unseeded of course, because they don't have a world ranking, haven't played enough on the world tour, one of the new pairings to emerge from Japan, as always though, with Chinese women's singles and women's doubles pair players. They are world-class as soon as they emerge on the world circuit. Conveyor belt of talent nurtured to world-class status by the Chinese coaching system. So for the Japanese players, Maeda, 22 years of age, I thought she'll be 23 next month, on the 14th to be precise. 1 metre 69, number one seeds, because of course they reach the Olympic semi final. Her partner, Toko Suetsuna, 27 years of age, and just slightly shorter than her partner. So, of course, this Japanese pair looking for their fourth final in 2008. Three times they've been beaten finalists in Germany, India, and the Indonesian Super Series event. And as I was mentioning just a moment ago, that titanic battle yesterday in the quarterfinal against Mahaswari and Gracia Poli of Indonesia. 21-16 in the deciding game, an hour and 18 minutes. Well, very nearly an hour longer than that previous semi-final, which only lasted 20 minutes, that men's singles. So now looking at the Chinese pair and Ching Shu. 21 years of age, tall lady, 5 foot 10, that's 1 meter 78. And her partner, a little bit shorter and a year older. Well, not actually a year older, because she only turned 22 earlier this month. Zhao Yunlei. So, of course, with three pairs going into the Olympics, ranked in the top three in the world in women's doubles, of course, this Chinese pair had no chance of qualifying for the Olympic Games. Of course, China not getting a clean sweep of Olympic women's doubles medals because the silver medal going to Li and Li of Korea. But as you can see, despite the fact that they've not been seeded, they have swept through to the semi-final without dropping a game. And that included a second round victory over the number five seeds, Ha Jun Un and Kim Min Jung of Korea. Wasowski, 
the umpire from Poland. And the second time we've seen Mr. Huang of Korea in the service judge's seat. As far as this Japanese pair are concerned, only one title throughout their career, and that was the US Open, which was a Grand Prix event last year. But as I say, three times they've been in finals so far in 2008, and that wonderful Olympic Games that they had, of course, in the quarterfinal, they defeated the defending Olympic champions of Yang Wei and Jiang Jiawen. And I think that defeat by the Japanese pair on the then world number one ranked pair has sent the Chinese top pair and former Olympic champions into retirement. Ready? Ready? Ladies and gentlemen, on the right, Miyuki Maeda, Satoko Tsuna, Japan. On my left, Chenshu Saoyun Lei, China. Yuki Maeda to serve to Yun Lei Tao. Lavo, play. Yes, and this is one of the matches that the crowd have come to see. Japan doing very well in this year's Yonix Japan Open. Semi finalist, of course, in the men's singles in the form of Targo. They've got men's doubles semi finalists. The match coming up next, and of course, this pair, the number one seeds. Maeda and Suetsuna. start by the Chinese combination. Ching Shu. The tall lady. You to see some tall Chinese women's doubles players. A number of their singles players have been very tall athletes. Zhang Ning, the Olympic champion. Xi Xinfeng. But a lot of their doubles players have tended to be a little bit shorter in stature. Yeah, a couple of tall athletes. start of this match, I mean, that quarter-final against the Indonesians was such a hard-fought battle, so physically demanding. That's going to go wide as well. And I did notice deep into that third game late last night that such was the physical effort, the perspiration. They were literally wringing out their skirts at the back of the court. Such was the perspiration and the physical effort. They haven't had long to recover. to recover, I have to say that one of the real qualities of the Japanese pair is their fitness levels. I remember that second round at the Olympic Games, that quarter-final against the defending Olympic champions, then defending Olympic champions. 
quite frankly, they outlasted Yang Wei and Zhang Jie Wen. And there was nothing wrong with their fitness last night in the quarterfinals either. by the Chinese combination. Yes. Cheng Shu hunting the net even after her partner had smashed. Smash had actually won the rally, but she was still ready and waiting for the next one. Yeah, look at the aggression. Penetrating with their attacking play. The defensive play of the Japanese pair is, in all honesty, one of the best defences in the world. I'd like to see the Japanese pair being a little more aggressive. Because at the moment, they're just sitting back and they're allowing their Chinese opponents to dictate the pace, dictate the rally. And the rallies are too short for the Chinese pair to, to be really feeling the pace. Cheng Jun, famous figure of a man approach to the Chinese women's double pair here. He, of course, twice an Olympic champion in mixed doubles with Gao Ling in 2000 and in Athens four years later. Good call from Zhao Yun Lei to her partner to leave it. Right, decision. Well, along of that back line. The Chinese have rushed to a 10 3 lead. Oh. And no one drifts along of that back line. Mm, almost a stunned silence from the crowd here at the Metropolitan Gymnasium here in Tokyo. work hard enough, sitting back too much, being too passive in their style of play, but my goodness, aren't the crowd trying to get behind them? will help their confidence. The crowd enjoying that, but what a difference. They're hitting the shuttle in a downward direction, taking the initiative. And if the Japanese pair want to come back, they've got to do more of that. squeal of delight. I haven't heard enough of that so far in this match. Of course, we heard it an awful lot last night. Well, 
are definitely getting sight of how good the defensive play of the Japanese pair is, but unless at some stage they try and switch that defense into attack, inevitably they will lose the rally. Disappointed in herself. Maeda finding the net with her smash. Japanese players always support each other so well. There's never any bickering or disquiet with each other, displeasure. Always still encourage and support. when they get on the attack. Women's doubles nowadays, the defensive play is so good. Very rare that you see a winner actually from the back of the court. Most of the time the players are just attacking shots, trying to set up their partner at the front of the court to finish off the rally because you just haven't really got an awful lot of hope of playing a winner from the back. force an error like that. It's very rare that the smash from the back of the court is an outright winner. disappointed with the performance of the number one seeds so far, but I have to say the Chinese pair have really come out for this semi-final, taking the game to the number one seeds, and in all honesty, they thoroughly deserve this lead. smile to her partner. Come on then, still in the hunt. <coughs> oh. Well there, a classic example of the way that the Chinese pair were able to turn their defensive play into attack. Hunting the net. It's impressive. Oh, yes. All 
about the intersection reading of the game. That was the one that did the damage. And then her second shot was a simple put away. Good low serve as well. She's got a lovely smile, hasn't she? Genuine smile to her partner after each rally. to take an awfully long time to do that low serve but my goodness wasn't it worth the wait in fact it's, it's something that with a lot of pairs now it bothers me that they tend to rush yeah, their serve so much it's nice to see a player taking their time consider about where they're going to place the low serve and we're not talking about time wasting we're talking about focus preparation Yep, and again, super. It's a good rally. It's wide. Disappointment written all over the face of Suna. Just felt that the Japanese pair were possibly coming back into this opening game. But now I suspect they've possibly left it too late. But the more they can extend the rallies and make the Chinese pair work really hard, the better the chances the home fans to see their players get through. Oh, that's fantastic defensive shot from Zhao Yunlai. Yeah. Driving the shuttle into the mid-court area past the front-court player, but making the shuttle land in front of the rear-court player. Great tactics for doubles. Eight game points now for the unseeded combination from China. Has one saved. Reading the game so well. Sutsuna stepping forward at exactly the right moment. Still game points, of course. Again, the defensive shot, this time from Maeda, driving the shuttle across court, giving herself an opportunity to may move forward to the net, and that is where the rallies will be run, from the front of the court. Disappointing way for the opening game to end on a service error. First game won by Chen Shu, Sao Yunlei, 21-15, interval. Well, 
opening game to the unseeded combination against the number one seeds. 18 minutes of action. And Chang Jun, the former Olympic mixed doubles champion. Well, he's been working with some of the younger women's doubles players and he's done a fantastic job. Because this pair has emerged into world badminton. Unseeded here at this Super Series event. The big question in my mind is, of course, whether the Japanese pair can keep working them hard enough, extending the rallies, that they gradually wear them down. And as far as the Chinese pair are concerned, what they've got to keep doing is continue to hit down and hunt the net. As soon as they back off from the net, and then the rallies will be extended. So much of doubles about the control of the front of the court. This semi-final, of course, from the top half of the draw, because the Japanese pair are on the number one seeds. Bottom half of the draw, I can tell you, number two and four seeds. Number two seeds from Indonesia, Vita Marissa and Liliana Natsia are up against Chin Yi Hui and Wong Pei Ti of Malaysia. But back to our semi-final. Chinese combination Cheng Shu and Xiao Yun Lei having taken the first game 21-15 nearest to us now with yellow shirts number one seeds the far side of the court as we look down Good judgment from Zhao Yunlei. Yeah. The squeal of delight from the Japanese as the line judge made the call. Channel attack, smash down the centre of the court, confuses your opponents, especially when they're a new combination like this Chinese pair. But not only that, if they've got the shuttle back, it narrows the angle of reply, and therefore there's a chance for the player at the front of the court to get involved and finish off the rally. And this is a much better start to the second game from the number one seed. No, oh, it's just long. Be a great retrieval of the net shot two, three. prior to this. But in the end, to no avail. Crikey, how did she even get a racket on that? Extraordinary.
cut short. Easy put away. Japanese combination, much to the delight of the fans here at the Tokyo Metropolitan Gymnasium. Umpire just having a word with the Chinese pair. I'm not quite sure what that was about. Channel attack down the centre of the court. signs to me that the Chinese pair are getting a little bit anxious knowing that unless they play a really good attacking shot their opponents are going to get it back and therefore they're trying to put a little bit of angle steepness on the shuttle and that's when they're hitting it into the net making the error minutes already this match has been in progress and still in the early stages of this second game. And it's interesting that the Chinese back on court before the Japanese pair sense that the momentum has actually switched in favour of the number one seeds but if that was the case I would have expected them to be back on court first eager to get on with it. That's very impressive, aggressive play from the Chinese pair. Good rotational play as well. One moves at the back of the court and then moves forward. The other player sensing that moves out on the cross court. Sooner. The opportunity was there. There's the frustration. Right idea, definitely. Trying to chase, change the pace with the little block. That's a good shot. A little more urgency in that rally from the Japanese there. And it was Maeda at the back of the court who was working so hard. Smash after smash. Big gulp of air. Cool, good. That was the correct call too. Obvious disappointment from the home players. 
But I have to say, apart from one obviously bad call earlier on today, throughout the entire tournament here in Tokyo, I think the line judging has been absolutely superb. Nine, seven. of bewilderment at the moment from the Japanese pair. And the problem they've got is that Chinese players are doing so well with their attacking play. It's not just the power of the attack, it's the placement. And they're penetrating rather too easily with their attacking shots. Japanese have got to turn that around like that. Now they're on the attack. Oh, but that's a sweet shot. Yeah, the little block from Zhao Yunlei. Turn the rally around. Four point advantage. This mid game interval. Well, difficult to know exactly what Zhang Jun was talking about there, but he did seem to be saying, well, sometimes on the defence, I want to see you whip it across court. But that block was delightful, really set up the rally, stepped into the defensive shot to Zhao Yunlei. Cheerleaders in the crowd. Nice atmosphere here in Tokyo. So four points advantage having taken the first. And eleven seven up in the second. Wide. Yeah, good judgment. Oh dear. Well, just when I sensed that this was the moment, the Japanese pair to start upping their pace and their intensity. An error on serve, gifting a point to the Chinese, and then an error on the return of serve. Goodness me. Of course, it's all very different for players when there's a burden of expectation, expected to win. Of course, this Japanese pair went to Beijing Olympics, weren't expected to be in the semi-final, exceeded all expectation. And now here they are at the Yonex Japan Open. They're the number one seed, the home tournament. Everybody expects them to deliver. It's different pressures. And my goodness, doesn't that sometimes affect the players? Oh, that's nice. Thinking about the placement rather than just getting the shuttle back, get it back with interest. Once again, to the centre of the court. to calm herself. Oh yes, it's worth the wait. And the margin reduced to just two points.
that is brilliantly played by the Chinese. Cheng Shu just guiding the shuttle across court there into the open space. Beautifully played, but also the vision to see that that's where the gap was. with so many of the top Chinese women's doubles players now in retirement from the game. Cheng Yao Wen, Jay Wen, Yang Wei, Gao Ling. And we're going to see an awful lot more of this young pair from China. They might well be leading the challenge in the very near future. 15-11. That is long. Over, We're very nearly at a stage of it's now or never. As far as the number one seeds are concerned, they've got to start making their move. Served in the net last time when she served. That time using the flick. Oh, once again, the anticipation from this young Chinese combination. Absolutely superb. Zhao Yunlei stepping forward at exactly the right moment. Oh. Yeah, good smash. I talked about the fact that it's not just power, that was placement. Aiming towards the left shoulder of Suetsuna. Yeah. Having to crouch down because it was aimed towards her left shoulder. That's why she made the error. So just four points away from a place in the final and defeating the number one seeds. The Chinese pair have got to put the closeness of the situation out of their minds and just concentrate one rally at a time. And that's one. 18, 12. Our graphics have got it. 18, 13. That's better. Shuttle required. Five points adrift. Good serving needed here from Maeda. Uh, the attacking play is just too good from the Chinese and the Japanese pair are just too content to sit back and defend. Uh, good combination play. Suna setting it up for Maeda at the front of the court. But one wonders. Is it too little, too late? Yeah, that 
that will certainly give them heart and the home fans something to cheer about. Taking those half chances at the front of the court and it was the first interception was the one that made the difference. 50, Good judgment by the Japanese pair. Creeping ever closer. An awful lot of this is about which players are able to hold their nerve. Asking for the court to be mopped and having a little time out. Japanese taking the opportunity too to towel down. Take some liquid on board. Still three points adrift. gasp from the crowd because the error on the smash from Maeda gives match point to the Chinese pair four of them to be precise that's a good smash. and that's it the first time of asking unseeded Chinese pair of Chen Shu and Zhao Yunlei have defeated the number one seed, the home favourites, Maeda and Suetsuna in two straight games, 21-15, 21-16 in 41 minutes. Disappointment for the crowd. They had such high hopes of this Japanese pair. But in the end, I think the more aggressive play, the more initiative taken by the Chinese combination was the deciding factor. And in all honesty, I thought they were the better pair on the day. So safely through to the final then, and China's tradition in women's doubles continues. One world-class pair after another. So as the Japanese pair leave the arena, appreciative of the crowd and their support throughout the tournament to all the Japanese players and wave goodbye but I'm sure we'll see them again before too long next match and our final semi-final of this afternoon's session will be men's doubles and that will be up very shortly it's the number two seeds the former world champions from Denmark Lars Porska and you are Rasmussen there up against the number four seeds from Japan Keita Masuda and Tadashi Otsuka will be back with all the action from that men's doubles in just a moment or two <laughs>